Hey guys, so in the last video I showed you how I took apart the Subaru engine down to the short block. In this video I'm going to show you how I took apart the block and we will finally find the cause of the knocking sound we were trying to figure out earlier. So I started by removing these two covers. I needed to use an impact driver on these because I tried using a screwdriver and I ended up stripping two of the bolts. Underneath there are these giant plugs that need to be removed with a 14mm hex bit. There are two plugs on each side of the block. You need to remove all four in order to remove the wrist pins on the pistons. In order to remove the pins and the clips, you need to line up the pins with the holes we just uncovered. You can put the crank bolt back on the crank and turn it so the pins line up with the holes. Once you start doing it, you'll see what I mean. On each piston, you'll need to remove these clips. I used long flat nose pliers to squeeze those tabs together and pull them out. Once you get that out, you can remove the wrist pins. There is a specialty tool that is used to pull the pins out. I don't have one so I used a different method. I'm sure I'm going to get some lectures about this, but this is the only way I could think of doing it. I used a long thin screwdriver that I used to hit the pin out from the other side. The screwdriver went through the opposite pin and rested on the inside edge of the pin I wanted to remove. I used a hammer to gently hit the pins out. It's recommended that you label the pins and clips so they go back on the same piston they came off of. Once the rods are no longer connected to the pistons, it's time to remove the bolts that hold the block halves together. There are 7 bolts on one side and 11 bolts on the other side. And just a heads up, they're on there even tighter than the cylinder head bolts. And even after you remove all the bolts, the halves still won't split. I had to use a rubber mallet, one of the bolts, and a pry bar to split the engine. I threaded the bolt in as far as it could go here and hit it to start splitting the block. On the other side, on the transmission cover, I used a pry bar to help split it. If you use a pry bar, you have to be careful not to use it somewhere that can cause oil or coolant leaks later. There are no fluids at this transmission cover so that shouldn't be a problem. It took a lot of hitting, prying, and more hitting before it cracked enough to use a pry bar to split the halves. Once it's split, you can carefully remove one half. At this point, I already knew what the problem was, but if you are rebuilding your engine, it's recommended that you place all internal parts on a clean surface, not dirty and dusty like I did. Let me show you what I found. I checked all the connecting rods for movement. Number 4 has no movement. Number 3 has no movement. And number 2 has no movement. But look at number 1. Look at how the rod moves on the crankshaft. That obviously shouldn't be happening. And let's look at the color of the rods. Number 2 is brown from oil. 3 is brown. 4 is brown. But number 1 is black. This is obviously experiencing some sort of extreme heat. I took off the rod, but it was so warped, I needed to use a hammer to get it off. And look at this bearing. No wonder there was foil in the oil pan. The bearings are all shaved and torn apart. That's going to be it for today, but next time I'm going to take some measurements to see how bad everything really is, and I'm going to talk to a few rebuild shops around town and get their opinion on getting this thing rebuilt. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe and watch my other videos.